Uh, in this module, module four, we're going to be talking about selection statements. Uh, these are obviously used in branching where we want the code to assess a certain condition and move towards one piece of code or another. Uh, so selection statements are this form of branching. Programmers will recognize them if you've done another programming languages, an if-then statement. Um, if we're looking to execute some code based on a condition being true, uh, we test the condition. If it's true, then we'll execute a group of code or we'll call methods or do something along those lines. And if it's false, we'll skip that code entirely. So this is what it kind of looks like from a diagramic uh, from a diagram perspective is a greater than five if it's true then we will say print yes if it's false we will say print no and these could be multiple statements that will do many different things uh, that we ask it to do so this in in java is done with an if statement uh, the general form of the statement is if open parenthesis we have some condition that we're going to test to see if it's true uh, close parenthesis we have our braces and then we'll execute either one or multiple statements if the condition is true now it's important to know that the condition must evaluate to a boolean value which means when we do some test of condition a greater than five the result will be a boolean true or false which means inside the condition we could also basically use a boolean value or boolean variable we could say if boolean b equals true we could literally test if b and that would suffice because b is a boolean uh, value we might also see if a certain condition is true we'll execute the statement between these braces and we will include else as an otherwise open brace close brace and execute again one or more statements so this allows us to do the true condition as well as the false condition and we can also have nested ifs so you can have an if within uh, within the if condition or even an else and an if within there the condition inside the if must evaluate to true as we said so conditions can take the form of the following equality is equals equals it is not a single equal sign so if we're going to look at uh, if b is equal to 7 say it would be b equals equals 7 you couldn't use a single equals because then the compiler couldn't determine whether or not you were trying to do a condition or an assignment b equals 7 would evaluate uh, as an assignment uh, the not equals is what we call bang equals or the exclamation point equals greater than is the greater than sign greater than or equal to less than and the less than or equal to sign and these form your basic conditions so here are some examples if a is less than 6 we test the condition of the variable a if it is less than 6 then we will execute the statements inside of the braces if b equals equals 7 and again we will test that condition and then execute the statements within the braces and finally if c greater than or equal to and there's a number missing here but this would have been 4 uh, we will execute the statements here if this was the actual piece of code we would have actually gotten an error uh, note a single equal sign will not work because it does represent an assignment so conditions can also be a compound. What that means is we want to test two conditions at the same time. So we will use the Boolean logical operators. And these logical operators are AND, OR, and NOT. And for those of you who are familiar with uh, more programming, you would ask, is there an exclusive OR? And the answer is yes, there is. But we're not going to do that right now. So the AND is a double ampersand. So when we say uh, ampersand, ampersand, we're asking that condition on the left is true and the condition on the right is true. Uh, if we use an or, it can be either or, either the condition on the left or the condition on the right is true. These are the two pipes, and the pipes are actually located uh, above the enter key. You'll have the backslash, and you'll if you do the shift, you'll see that that is what constitutes the pipe. Uh, not is also going to negate whatever the Boolean value or the Boolean expression is, and this is just bang. Um, we say if A is less than 6, for example, if this evaluates the true, and B is equal to equal to 7, then we'll execute these statements. Another example is if not found. So found is a Boolean variable, and if we use the exclamation point, we're going to negate that, and then we're going to see if that's true, uh, or if C is greater than or equal to 8 is true. If either one is true, we will execute the statements within the braces. So multiple simple if statements. Uh, this is a, a typo here for uh, for PowerPoint that likes to convert these smaller i the small i into a large i or a capital I. Uh, but you'll understand what the code does. Uh, we may have some very simple things. So for example, we will have if month equals equals one, execute something. If month equals equals two, execute something. And again, and we don't need the else's because again, month would not evaluate to those. Uh, if month was two, uh, we wouldn't need to worry about it evaluating to either one or three. 
Uh, again, I have more of them, and then I'll do if month equals equals 12. So we're examining the month variable to determine which month it is, obviously. But this is actually done a little bit easier with a different type of statement called switch. The switch statement actually allows us to test a variable uh, a number of times. And it, uh, the general form of the statement looks like this. We have the word switch, the keyword switch. Now we're testing a variable. Now notice this variable is actually going to be an integer or a character. It's not going to be a string, and it's uh, not even Boolean in this case. We have, uh, we have the open brace and a closed brace down here. And then for each one of these, we will have a case statement. So we will say case one. And what we're saying here is if variable is equal to one, then it will execute this statement, or as you can see in case two, multiple statements. Uh, in the case of case two, here we have statement and statement, and then a break, and both of them have the break statement. What that basically means is that when it executes the statement, the break will, ex will take the execution outside of the switch. If the break was not there, and the variable was equal to one, it will execute all of the statements in a row until it reaches the end of the switch or it reaches the corresponding break. So if this break was not here and variable was one, it would execute this statement and then the next one under case two and then that one under case two and then it would hit the break and jump out. So it's normally good practice to have the breaks in unless you know that you wanted to do a certain uh, set of statements that are uh, connected if it's case one and case two. And again, the cases can be anything to evaluate, such as 9, 10, they don't have to be in order. We're just using this as an example of 1 and 2. If uh, there's an example where the variable does not match anything, then you can have a default uh, code where the variable will, the if the variable is not 1 or 2, in this case, it will jump to the default and execute a certain statement so that no condition has been met, and it can be one or multiple statements, it doesn't matter. So here's an example of the month example. Uh, month equals equals one, two, three, four, five, and so forth. We might invert that uh, into a switch statement and make it a little better. That says switch month, open brace, there's my close brace, and I'll do case one, case two, case three, case four, case five. And you'll see here's my statements with a break, my break, my break, the break, and the break. No default is needed because I don't have any catch-all statement.